welcome to my first firearms video. It's the first one I've ever done. Um, reason I'm doing it is because I just got this baby this week. This is my first ever AK-47, and I'm pretty psyched about this thing. Um, this is a Blackheart International B-10B Generation 3 AKM, Romanian variant. Um, just started putting out this version of them. They've been making these for a while, but uh, they've made some changes to them. And this is the latest generation of it, Gen 3. Um, looked online for reviews on this or anything on it, and there really isn't anything. There's one video on a black heart that's a, an underfolder version. I think that's a Generation 2. Um, so I decided, well, I mean, I'm not AKM expert. I'm not Robski from AK Operators Union, and there's a few other guys out there that are really good that'll know a hell of a lot more than I will about it. And hopefully they'll get one of these and run a run a review on it and get into the guts of it. But I'm just going to show it to you because I think this is a really nice rifle. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and pop the hood, and I'll give you what I know about it, and uh, you guys can go from there with it. I think it's a really nice rifle. So as you can see, this one is the black furniture one. Now, I originally was looking at the wood furniture on one because that's the iconic AK look. I thought, well, you know, but I went to, uh, went to go and look. Uh, well, let's go, let's back that up. Originally, I was looking for one that was going to be, you know, affordable. Not a, you know, I didn't need a Vepper. Um, I don't need an arsenal. I just wanted something that was going to be good, you know, and decent for the money. And everybody says, oh, Wasser, Wasser, Wasser. Well, Wassers are running about, you know, last time I checked, I saw one on sale for 680 bucks. And I was thinking, well, that's still kind of high. And I mean, it's a, it's a Wasser. It's, you know, it's a $550 rifle at best. So, um, time to look around. See, well, what the hell's out there? What, what's going on? What can I get? What's reasonable? And uh, I was checking the Atlantic Firearms site, because they usually have good rifles at good prices, and I came across this, Black Card International. Um, $639, exactly what you see right here, plus the operator's manual. You get Tapco magazine, this rifle, this furniture, this setup. Same price as the wood one. Normally, this one will run you a little bit more than just the, uh, the wood furniture setup, but they're running it at the same price right now, so I think it's a pretty good deal. Okay, so this is Generation 3, this is the B10B, the wood one's the B10W, and there's one more version with a collapsible stock, don't, can't remember what the lettering on that one is, but they're all in the same setup, it's the furniture and stuff that changes. Um, this one has uh, Phoenix Technologies butt stock with the trap door on it. It's got this grip. I like this grip. That's kind of why I bought it. Um, and it's got the polymer forend and it's got, as you can see, one, two, three rails on it for mounting whatever you want to mount on there. A can opener, a set of headlights, turn signals, whatever you like to throw on your AK and knock stuff out. Um, this one, really nice rifle. Generation 3. What's the difference between a Gen 2 and a Gen 3? What they told me. Um, and I'm still getting ahead of myself here. Let me tell you that difference real quick. On the Generation 2, when it came to the receiver, it was spot heat treated. Generation 3 receivers are fully heat treated receivers. They do the whole thing now. So, I kind of heard that. I thought, well, that sounds like a stronger, better thing for me. So, I'd go towards this. Um, like I said, their price at Atlantic was $639. Now, the cool thing is, is that Blackheart, who makes this, is only about an hour's drive from my house. So I decided, well, let me go there, because I know they got a showroom. Let me get these in my hand, and let me see and ask them, because I didn't know at the time what the difference was between the Gen 2 and the Gen 3. I said, well, I'll just go there and ask them. So I went there, talked to this nice young lady, Denise, and uh, she started giving me all the lowdown on this, told me what the difference was. They had a bunch of them there that I could check out get in my hand, so I picked up the wood one, yeah, it was kind of alright, kind of nice, and then she brought this one out, whoa, and I'll tell you what really sold me on this, was this hand grip, instead of just the straight 
polymer whatever grip they got on most AKs. This one has got the grooves for the fingers, and oh man, it just sat perfect in my hand. Absolutely perfect. So, she heard, um, she knew that Atlantic had them. She, we were talking about that. And 639, and she was like, really? She was, couldn't believe that they had it for that low. She went and checked and came back in. Said, well, you know what? If you want it, I'll price match them. And pretty much that was it. I walked out the door with this rifle. <laughs> and I'm happy that I did. Um, as you can see, there's no optics rail on this. Let me get that in closer. No optics rail on this rifle. So if I ever want to go bump it up to a scope, I'm going to probably be looking at uh, Texas weapon system upper uh, dust cover with the, uh, the rail on it to mount a scope on it. Also, another thing I found on this one is that on your sight leaf, let me get this up here, see if you can see that. On the sight leaf, and I hope this is getting in focus, I don't know, kind of hard to tell. Probably not. On the sight leaf here, like most of them have like up to eight or six meters. This one goes one, two, three, four. Now, I don't know, if, I don't actually know if this is in yards or meters. I don't know. So when it comes to sighting this thing in, I may have to call him back and ask him about that one. But I don't think it right, you know, right now, that's not a worry because with my eyes, I'm not hitting anything out over two, three hundred yards anyway. So I'm not going to sweat that one. Um, as you can see, the safety here, the safety lever, a lot of them have come in with the groove in it now for the bolt hold open. This one doesn't have it. It's still like an original one. Um, the internal parts on this thing. Let me see if I can do this without looking like a total fool. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll take pictures of this to uh, show you guys. Because it's not... Okay, wolf spring that comes in here. It's a wolf spring for extra tension. Good spring setup from what I hear. Um, trigger is a Romanian trigger. It's not the Tapco G2 trigger. It's the Romanian trigger. Which, Kind of looks better. I don't know. I was warned about this trigger. And, and I was warned by one of the guys that worked there. They said, with these Romanian triggers, it's kind of hit or miss. As far as, I mean, the trigger's going to work fine, no problem. But the trigger slap, that's what they were talking about. You could get some trigger slap coming back that may sting you a little bit. Some guys will, let me see, get that up there. Some guys may, some rifles may do it, some may not. But this one doesn't have, like, if you notice, like, on the G2s, geez, it's going to be hard to do this, especially black gloves with black thing in the dark light. The face on this, it's more rounded. I think the G2s kind of have more of a sharp angle to them. This one appears to be more rounded. Like I said, I haven't shot it yet, so I don't know what that's going to be like when it comes to shooting this thing. Uh, let's see what else we got going on in here. So, the bolt, the bolt and the bolt carrier, and I'm going to have to go to the cheat sheet here, because they, let me see, are they hammer forged? Let's see here. Chrome line 4150 barrel, hammer forged, bolt carrier, the bolt and the trunnion are both. The trunnions and the bolt are both machined from billet steel. So there's nothing cast in this gun at all. This is all machined. This is pretty good. Pretty good parts here. High quality. Oh, man, look at that. Wow. Wow, holy crap. This looks <laughs> really good. From what I've seen online in some of like Rob's videos, Robski, AK Operators Union, like some of the ones he showed, this thing is like amazing. Look at this. Look at this bulk here. Look at that in there. There's no machining or anything, marks in there or anything. I mean, it just looks straight, simple, nice, really good looking. 
course, this could be crap. I wouldn't even know it. I'm not enough of an, I, I'm no kind of expert on an AK-47. So, I mean, take it for what it's worth when you're hearing it from me. That looks good. Another thing I'm going to do, once, once I start shooting it, I'm going to go ahead and, and keep a track. Because I notice, like, on a lot of the, the 5,000 round testing videos, that this part right here it takes a lot of abuse from, from the triggers. And I'm going to see how much deformation I get on this at the end of this bolt carrier here. Hopefully not a lot. I mean, you think if it's, if it's made out of billet steel, this thing should take a pounding, but you never know. Uh, let's look inside here. At the rails and systems, the trunnions look good. I'm looking for, where's the, uh, huh. is that the, uh, what the, paper clip that Rob's always railing against the that holds in the uh, pins for the trigger what the hell is it I don't even see anything like that in there oh man I need better lighting than what I got uh, hard to tell looks okay they don't have the paper clip, it looks like. To me, it looks like they've got the, uh, that clip. The, uh, metal. Jeez, if I get this thing back in here now. this a little this is another trick I got off of Rob if your safety feels a little tight you just want to kind of get a little bit of push away eh, a little bit better but yeah this doesn't have the paper clip that holds in this stuff it's it's that metal, that little curvy thing like that. I, believe me, <laughs> you're not going to get technical stuff from me on my channel here on this one, okay? Remember, newbie, newbie, hello, newbie. Looks good, looks like they test fired it. Yeah, a little bit of there, but that's nothing to really worry about. Right, let's get this seated. I can find the grooves. This is like the first time I've ever taken a bolt out of one of these, so don't make fun of me too much here. Let's see. Where's my grooves? I guess it's in back there. There we go. Ah, it helps if you have that in, right? Okay. There we go. Well, see, even a 10-year-old can do it. Unfortunately, they are doing it in Africa too damn much. Okay. So... Get this one back together. Now, I have taken the dust cover off once or twice, and for me, it's only because I, you know, not used to AK, so get that there. I'm sure, once I do this a hundred times, then it'll be like, you know, second nature. Here we go. 
like I said, even an idiot can do it. I'm proof of that. Smack that down, get that there. All right, so now we do the, make sure I put that back in right. Do that. Hold it. Right, pops, snaps, and final. doesn't fire so looks like I did it good I did it right so like I say this thing is a pretty pretty damn decent rifle from what I can tell I haven't shot it yet getting ready to go out and shoot I'm gonna bring the camera and when I go and film me shooting it this is not gonna be hey look how great I'm hitting the targets of this I haven't zeroed this thing in yet I don't even have this the tool to zero the front sight so it's gonna be a little while before I can really know what this baby can really do but I am going to run some rounds through it because you don't buy one of these things not to run some rounds through it. So we'll see how it is out of the factory, what kind of sighting I get out of it, what kind of accuracy there is. Just straight out of the factory, sights at battle zero, 50 to 100 yards maybe, if I even have that much room on where I'm going to shoot. Uh, let's see, fully heat treated the receiver, 4130 steel, fully heat treated. New parts from Cougar, Romania, brand new out of the factory parts, nothing demilled, nothing surplus. Uh, like I said, Tapco orange infused 30 round magazine. I picked up a second one because you can't ever have this one. They're like waste potato chips. Uh, Parkerized finish, mill spec. Throw, they throw in the, the padded case. Um, what am I missing? Anything? I told you about the Wolf Recoil Spring. Polymer handguard, Phoenix Technologies furniture on this thing. It's nice. Uh, bayonet lug, cleaning rod comes with it. Sights didn't look canted either. Uh, let's see. You can tell. I mean, if you see the front sights, I don't see a cant on them. They look pretty straight to me, pretty good. I think these guys do really good work. I mean, for God's sake, they do get contract work with the federal government, CIA and stuff. They are building arms for them, too. So, all in all, it looks like a good rifle. So, without further ado, I think we're going to run it out to, uh, we're going to run it out to Rich Mountain on the side of the mountain, and we're going to start blasting some stuff. I got our... Well, I got uh, 120 rounds, so I think I'll run it through here, and we'll see how she runs, and if I get any problems, uh, bring on the camera, we'll film it, and uh, let's go for a ride. <laughs> 